Hey guys, it's Edward. So today, I'm gonna to give you five reasons on why you code like trash and what you can do to resolve it. Symptoms of coding like trash are having unmaintainable code, code that constantly breaks, and code that nobody wants to touch with a 10-foot pole. Results of coding like trash can be as small as small bugs to slowed progress on a project to a system not even being able to evolve with needs. I'll go over each of the scenarios that lead to coding like trash and I'll tell you how to remedy each of the situations. See your doctor if CLT persists more than four weeks after watching this video. So if you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe and watch this until the very end. It lets me know that you enjoy videos like this and you want to see more of them. And if you follow me on my socials, you can vote for what topic I cover next. So with that, let's begin. First reason why you might code like trash is you don't understand the requirement. Symptoms include slapping on hacky code, coming up with an answer to a question in two minutes or with little thought, and not understanding why a project is being asked of a developer. When you begin a project, you might be able to visualize how the app or website or whatever you're writing should behave. The product team might even give you some specs and documents. But you don't really know ahead of time every possible state that the application can run into. And as a developer, that is what you're going to have to figure out and handle as you build your code. Let's take a mobile app for example. Suppose I asked you to code up a signup flow for a social media application. A user inputs their name, phone, email, and password, and then receives a text message for a two-factor authentication. After that text message is received, the user is supposed to input that authentication code. Seems simple enough, right? But what is likely to happen is that you only have the initial idea. You only really know what the app should look like in the happy cases where you land on the signup flow and the two-factor authentication screen. But it's never as simple as that. Imagine the user submits their signup form and then quits the app before putting in their two-factor authentication. How do you want your app to function? It doesn't make sense to send the user back to the signup form every single time they restart the application. So you'll need to design an entry point to check if there's an existing form. There are many, many ways a client can mess up your application or code. And of course, even though no one told you what these requirements are, they're still expected from you. But the even worse scenario is what if those implicit or explicit requirements change? Can you pivot your efforts to accommodate for that? And if you're coding like trash, chances are you're just kind of slapping on code as you go as you encounter these states. You just encounter the situation and then usually you will just write some if statement to branch off and handle that one situation. But really what ends up happening is that your code is littered with a bunch of forks and if statements that it's impossible to trace the logic. So if you find yourself constantly doing this and coding as you go, here's what the solution is. Think through every reasonable scenario your code can run into whether that is a client user interaction or any use of your APIs. Understand what can happen in each circumstance and how the application or code should respond. Because change is inevitable and some factors or hindrances will arise outside of your foresight. What matters is that you think ahead and position your code to change to these and future challenges. And that starts with understanding what is expected of you as a developer and your project. The second reason why you code like trash is that you fully don't understand your code. Symptoms include copying and pasting blindly from Stack Overflow, gratuitous use of open source software, and asking others to help you debug your own code. When you write the code, it's very important that you understand what you are writing. And I'm not talking about a surface level like you might from a Stack Overflow answer. I mean, being able to pull back the curtain, look under the hood, and understand the implications are of the function you're calling. You might be calling some APIs, but what are those APIs doing underneath? How are the objects in memory being handled? And what other objects and APIs are being called? What are the potential misuses of your code? And are you performing an operation that can inadvertently cause a crash? As an example, suppose I gave you two pieces of code. Both of these iterate through a list and remove the integer it is looking at. Which one of these is buggy? This one is. Why? Because you are iterating and removing at the same time. Not properly handling this will trigger a concurrent modification exception. Now, you might be able to catch this in unit tests and argue that something like this is very simple and very easy to handle, but that's kind of the point. We're not always going to be cognizant of every scenario or every little nuance of the language we're writing in. And if we overwrite and overtest, then future changes are more likely to break these tests anyway. So what's the point of writing tests if they're always going to break when we want to introduce a new feature? If you understand what you're writing, you can pick and choose the best solution or the best way of writing an answer to a problem just based on what you think can happen and what will happen. 
because it's simply better to not be in a position where this can be an issue in the first place. And the first step to doing this is understanding exactly what each of your function calls do. So what's the solution? Not only should you understand what you're writing, you should also reasonably predict how it can be used in the future and bulletproof against that. Also, deep dive into your code and SDKs and see what actually happens underneath the hood. Chances are, the issues that you encounter and what you read will come up again. And if you do the exercise now, you'll understand that and be so much more prepared when you write things in the future. And if you actually need to rely on third-party libraries, at least draw some division between the code and the library with some interfaces. Now, the third reason why you might code like trash is because, well, you don't know where the project is going. Symptoms include not understanding the engineering process, not listening to your team lead, and sleeping through business meetings with product. Now, this one I was actually pretty guilty of. I, I legitimately fell asleep during a business meeting with product. Um, yeah, that, that, that was not good. Requirements change all the time, but you can reasonably infer where the project is heading and how it might evolve by understanding the intention behind it. It is very unlikely a project just becomes an entirely new idea overnight, but small incremental changes in the direction of the project and the business is very likely. The progress and changes can be business or tech related. As an example, a business progression can be YouTube supporting ads. This has nothing to do with what already exists and is a new feature or functionality that needs to be added because it is a good money-making opportunity. On the other hand, an example of a tech progression would be when APIs get deprecated or removed, when language updates occur, or maybe the system itself needs to scale up. In order to do these changes, you will need to think about how to restructure the code and reorganize it in order to support the new features you want. But at the same time, it could have been faster, easier, and simpler to do that had you written the code to support such ideas in the first place. And this is where knowing your patterns and abstractions comes in. Knowing where to preemptively guard your code and allow for flexibility and rigidity will make you a better engineer. You can anticipate changes and make them as needed. If you find yourself going back over the same code that you wrote before just to add a little more functionality and it feels extremely painful to do so, take a step back and ask yourself if the progression is natural and reasonable. If it is, then chances are it's your fault for not really thinking ahead. So what is the solution? While most engineers focus on the technical aspects, the best engineers understand the business as well. A product that is not profitable will not live. Your organization will just sunset it and move on, so it is best not to put too much effort into trying to expand on a dead project. On the other hand, actually understanding where the business is headed will allow you to predict what products you may want to build on top of your platform, and it will allow you to build the code necessary to support future endeavors. I would highly recommend to understand what leadership is thinking and to start sitting in on meetings that are tangentially related to your team. Understanding the upcoming changes that your team will rely on and how that affects your code will go a very big way when actually writing your current projects. This will allow you to predict where your code is headed and how you might want to handle things in the future. The fourth reason why you might code like trash is because you don't protect the code from changes. Symptoms include frequently changing coding standards, constantly redoing your own work, and frequent rewrites of the code base. Suppose that your feature requirements are very feasible and easy. However, it would involve taking some standard practices and utility classes and bending them in a way that is untenable and unmaintainable. Now, you might say that, hey, this is just a one-off thing. It's segmented away from the rest of the code, and we have bigger fish to fry. I just want to get this out of the way. And sure, in some circumstances, you can argue that this is the case. Time crunch is real, and hacking code might be needed at least for now. What's more likely to happen is that if it's happened once, it will happen again. Not to mention, as time goes on, you're going to need to maintain it. That hacky code you wrote six months ago just to get a margin to look okay? Yeah, now that's preventing you from creating a new row in the table. Even worse, people saw that you wrote things a particular way and decided to copy it. Developers are lazy by nature, so we just copy whatever precedent has already been set. So eventually, your code rots and will become a cancer that consumes your system, leading to an inevitable rewrite. The point I'm trying to get at is that you'll be creating a lot of precedents for ignoring standards, almost to the point where the standards themselves are irrelevant. There's a reason why your code base has evolved to adhere to certain standards. There are legal, organizational, and performance-based reasons why code is written in a certain way, and while you might think it is more optimally written in another way, there's a very good chance that there are factors that you yourself did not consider. Breaking those standards means that you have a very good reason to believe that a particular practice is better than all the past experiences and considerations of other developers. So the solution to this is to refuse to do changes that wreck your code base. As a developer, your job is to protect your code. That means that if someone wants you to create a piece of code that would destroy your code architecture 
or break from precedent, then the payoff must be very, very big. In fact, you are obligated to raise this concern instead of just going along with the change. Chances are the project is just a draft of an idea and is open to negotiating. There is an idea behind the design, and as long as that idea is met, then any minor cosmetic changes that won't break your code will probably be okay. Or if you cannot negotiate with Prog to do that, then try to at least mitigate the damage. Comment that code as a one-off situation that is not intended to be used again or reorganize a section of code so that it is very difficult to use. And finally, the fifth reason why you might code like trash is because you don't respect your teammates. Symptoms include doing things on your own, ignoring the work of your teammates, and not making any progress on the knowledge base of your project. This is a big one for a lot of you just starting out in your careers. A lot of you might think that you are respecting your coworkers by trying to prove yourself and handle things on your own. But I would actually suggest that this is the opposite. The reason why I say this is because your coworkers have put in long hours and plenty of thought into the code that already exists. Sure, it might not be perfect, no code base is, but these decisions were made under circumstances that you are not aware of, which means that these decisions at the time that they were made are correct. Furthermore, everyone brings something different to the table. That's why they were hired in the first place. So you shouldn't necessarily have to override them. In fact, you should be more open to what they have to say because they may know more than you do. That is how you learn and become a better developer, by embracing the ideas of others and trying them out. Now they may not necessarily work and they may not necessarily be right either. But what's important is that you're open to the change and you're open to the considerations of other people. Now you might say that you need to do things on your own to improve and learn and sure, yeah, that's true to an extent. You do need to figure things out on your own, however, most of the time, especially when you are just starting out, it is simply easier to ask because people will probably have already figured out the answer to the question that you're trying to solve. It will speed up your development, you will focus and learn about the things that matter instead of trying to rediscover the same knowledge, and you can turn your sights onto actual projects that matter and have impact. And all you really have to do is just ask your teammates for some help. Look at their code. Copy their code if you really have to. Understand why they wrote something the way they did because chances are, there's something in it that you can learn about. So I hope you found that helpful and I hope this video has cured your CLT syndromes. So that'll do for me. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Also, feel free to connect with me on my socials where you can vote for what topic you want to see next. And if you want to try and secure that next job offer, you can book me for interview coaching at eChantech.com. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.